Hurricane Harvey was the eighth named storm of the 2017 hurricane season and was the first storm to make a major hurricane landfall in the United States since 2005, ending the longest such gap in United States history. Harvey is also tied for the fourth strongest hurricane landfall along the coast of Texas. Whilst its damage total is not yet known, it is at least the third costliest storm in United States history. This report from Force 13 is mainly full of data, but we're also showing you imagery and video of what the storm looked like, both from the air, from satellites, and from the ground. The text version of this report can be found on the Force 13 website. In mid-August, several tropical waves emerged from the coast of Africa, including a wave which emerged off the coasts of Senegal and Gambia on August 13th. Initially very broad and disorganised, these waves competed for energy and began acquiring rotation by the 15th. Two of these waves were being monitored by the National Hurricane Centre, and it soon became apparent that the first of which would be the dominant one and began to resemble the appearance of a tropical cyclone by August 17th, whilst it was approaching the Lesser Antilles. It was named Harvey by the beginning of August the 18th, after a circulation was found shortly after the storm had been found to have had 40 mile an hour winds, but they were awaiting the circulation. By this point, the storm was already upon Barbados and crossed through the Lesser Antilles on the morning of August 18th, affecting all islands from Grenada to Martinique. Harvey, whilst never particularly impressive to begin with, began to struggle later on August the 19th into the 20th in the eastern and central Caribbean and degenerated into a tropical wave. The wave became ill-defined as it passed near and over Nicaragua and Honduras, but was closely monitored into August 23rd, when it was finally redesignated as a tropical depression. Early on August 24th, Harvey generated deep convection which sustained itself throughout the day, and before the end of that day, an eye began to clear out as it progressed towards the northwest. Hurricane watches had already been issued for Texas, and by 6pm UTC, the storm reached winds of 80 miles per hour after this phase of rapid intensification. Regular reconnaissance plane coverage saw Harvey's pressure continually drop, generally at a rate of around 1 millibar per hour, until more rapid intensification began to occur on August 25th in the run-up to landfall after a brief lull. By that afternoon, the 25th, the eye temperature entered positive temperatures, indicating a significantly strong hurricane, by which point cold cloud tops had wrapped around most of the eye. This process continued until later in the day, with Harvey peaking as it was making landfall, with winds likely of 140 miles per hour and a pressure in the 930s in millibars. That's according to Force 13's analysis. Officially, the National Hurricane Center rated the storm with winds of 130 miles per hour and a pressure of 938 millibars. But at the time of broadcast, the post analysis has not yet been completed, and their post analysis will probably upgrade this figure, backed by satellite imagery indications of winds in the 140s. Harvey made landfall northeast of Corpus Christi, Texas who as a whole avoided hurricane force winds, but locations to the northeast, such as Rockport and Port Aransas, saw more severe consequences. Harvey's eye remained for eight hours after landfall before disappearing entirely, and rapid weakening took place as the storm continued north, slowing down and then stalling over inland Texas, and delivering unprecedented storm rainfall totals to the region. On August 28th, Harvey emerged back over the Gulf of Mexico and was still a minimal tropical storm, and some intensification took place as it rounded towards the east and then northeast into its final landfall along the Texas-Louisiana border, with winds of 40 miles per hour on August 30th. Rainfall continued into the beginning of September as the storm remained identifiable as a depression before being pushed off towards the northeast as a post-tropical cyclone. Here is a miscellaneous selection of images of the storm's landfall progression viewed by many of the visible satellites and the infrared image of the storm making landfall.
Here is Force 13's track chart showing the progression of Hurricane Harvey from its first beginnings on August the 13th as it was leaving the coast of Africa to becoming a tropical storm on the 18th, weakening back to a tropical wave on the 20th of August and then regenerating on the 23rd, its passage towards landfall and its stalling over Texas. Finally, the storm moved off towards the northeast over the continental United States and was last detected just north of Charlotte. Here is a comparison chart with other agencies, Force 13's analysis compared with the National Hurricane Center and the ATCF which is run by the US Navy, also observing the storm. In general, there are only subtle differences, apart from Force 13's peak intensity and wind speed appearing to be slightly higher than the other agencies. As air pressure was frequently recorded by the reconnaissance planes, there isn't too much deviation between Force 13's final analysis and those of the officials. Force 13 and the National Hurricane Center do agree that Harvey's central pressure reached the 930s upon landfall. Now we take a look at the forecasting critique amongst the models and the NHC. The intensity error charts show how many miles per hour the model predictions were from the observed intensity two days later. There is also a chart for five days later which we will show shortly. A value of zero denotes a perfectly accurate prediction in this case to two days out. Negative values correspond to predictions lower than the observation and positive values show predictions higher than the observation. In the case of the two-day errors, the National Hurricane Center's average error was 16.4 with 40 predictions, the HMON average error was 11.4 with 59 predictions, the HWRF 12.7 with 61 predictions, the SHIP for 5 day 28.2 with 60 predictions, the DSHP 18.3 with 60 predictions and the CTCX 11.7 with 45 predictions. Therefore, the best model for two-day errors in terms of intensity was the HMON model, followed very closely by the CTCX. Overall, the National Hurricane Center performed fairly poorly in comparison with the models over the two-day period intensity. The five-day intensity average errors looked like this. The National Hurricane Center 10.3 over 31 predictions, the HMON 18.8 over 44 predictions, the HWRF 23.4 over 52 predictions, the SHIP for 5 day 31.3 over 52 predictions, the DSHP 25.1 over 52 predictions, and the CTCX 11.7 over 38 predictions. Therefore, the overall 2-day and 5-day intensity errors combined look like this. The National Hurricane Center 13.7 over 71 predictions, the HMON 14.6 over 103 predictions, the HWRF 17.6 over 113 predictions, the SHIP for 5-day 29.6 over 112 predictions, the DSHP 21.4 over 112 predictions and the CTCX 11.7 over 83 predictions. Overall, the best intensity model over the, both the two-day and five-day periods was the CTCX, which outperformed the National Hurricane Center. The track error graphics show how far away from a perfectly accurate positional prediction the computer models and the National Hurricane Center predicted two and five days before the fact. Values are expressed in angular degrees and a value closer to zero, or the center of the graphic, indicates a more accurate prediction. First of all, the two-day track errors. With a two-day lead time, these models and the National Hurricane Center performed like this. The average error for the National Hurricane Center was 0.9 after 24 predictions, the HWRF 1.6 after 47 predictions, the HMON model 2.1 after 45 predictions, the GFS 1.4 after 41 predictions, the NAVGEM 2.1 after 30 predictions, and the CTCX 1.4 after 34 predictions. The National Hurricane Center performed clearly the best out of those at this point. With a lead time of 5 days, the average errors looked like this. 
the National Hurricane Centre 3.5 after 13 predictions, the HWRF 2.9 after 35 predictions, the HMON 5.1 after 33 predictions, the GFS 4.7 after 28 predictions, the NAVGEM 5.2 after 17 predictions, and the CTCX 3.6 after 21 predictions. Therefore, the best performer out of these over a five-day period was the HWRF. Also notable to mention that the HMON model always predicted Harvey to move inland towards the west after it would make landfall, which of course never verified. And the NAVGEM also predicted something rather similar, though moving the storm towards the south after landfall. Also, that did not transpire either, and so its average error is indeed higher. Overall, the two-day and five-day track errors combined looks like this. The National Hurricane Center's average error 1.8 over 37 predictions, the HWRF 2.2 over 82 predictions, the HMON 3.4 over 78 predictions, the GFS 2.7 over 69 predictions, the NAVGEM 3.2 over 47 predictions, and the CTCX 2.3 over 55 predictions. Therefore, the National Hurricane Center outperformed all of the models in terms of track. Hurricane Harvey was observed by Force 13 using the CDPS, the Cyclone Destruction Potential Scale, a method which was adopted in January 2017. Harvey reached CDPS Stage 6. The Cyclone Destruction Potential Scale is a new way of measuring cyclone impacts in a more meaningful way. For the past 45 years, storms worldwide have been measured using the Saffir Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale split into five categories. However, this scale measures wind alone and does not correlate well with actual impacts on land measured by monetary damage. The CDPS measures other factors such as storm size and forward speed as well as intensity to create a 10-tiered scale that encompasses tropical storms as well as hurricanes. Since Harvey was stage 6, the definition for which is very powerful storms that are likely to cause catastrophic damage. Force 13 issued 17 hours of live coverage, 13 recorded updates in English and 4 recorded updates in Spanish on Hurricane Harvey. Two of the live coverage hours were produced by Force 13 AU on behalf of Force 13. The video content received an overall approval rating of 96%. Comments, suggestions and inquiries should be directed to contact at force13.co.uk or any of Force 13's online platforms. This was our report on Hurricane Harvey.